right, everyone, welcome to today's Compliance Corner. I am Orly, as always, and you are? I'm Noel, as always. As, as always. <laughs> um, welcome. I wanted to say welcome to Batman and Robin again, but I, I, I think we need a little bit more gender appropriate type of type of name. So Wonder Woman and Cassie, right? It's Except no one knows that Cassie is a sidekick. Nope. Nobody does. I say yeah. we're Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley, Thelma and Louise, other yep. great women. Well, Thelma, not and Thelma and Louise. That's a little scary with the, you know. Mm, yeah. All right. So maybe the not. other ones. Up until, up until they drive over the edge, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so you told me something oh, as we were getting ready for the show, um, Noel, that people are actually beginning to hear you on Compliance Corps, which is two thumbs up. Yay. So you guys are liking the show and you want to hear more or you have ideas on shows that we should do. Just uh, reach out to us in the com comments, um, leave a comment, and we love to try and uh, do a show that people are asking for. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So while we uh, get to today's topic, it's all about technology versus policy. <laughs> today's technology versus policy question is: So when you're thinking about achieving CMMC compliance, DS compliance, DFARS compliance, you name all it, people compliance. try and put it in these kind of you know, I'm going to put my hand on a stack of Bibles and say it has to be this way. You know, it has to be achieved. Compliance has to be achieved. Technology has to be achieved, or it has to be achieved versus policy. But it's a little bit more, you know, nuanced than that. We're not talking about something like the Yankees versus my home, the Red Sox. Noel is from Utah, where there aren't really any. Oh, I'm not from Utah. Utah. All right, let's not we'll mix. Live in Utah for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> All right, so. Poor girl, she doesn't have her own baseball or football team to, to cheer oh, for. But technology versus policy, it's not like Yankees versus Red Sox. It's not like Frazier versus Ali. You know, it's a little bit more nuanced. Um, it's kind of like, you know, putting the chocolate in your cake, you mix it in. And so what we're going to talk about is a little bit more about the nuance of achieving compliance through a lens of technology and policy rather than technology versus policy. Um, and so that's going to be the topic for today's show. Um, and so why don't we just kick it off, uh, Noel? why don't you help people and give them a bit of nuance on this topic? Sure. So I, I think you you really covered it very well, that there are kind of different camps that feel like, oh, you know, or, or you can go, and I, I've heard this from customers and potential customers so many times in the past few months. Well, well, I went to this technology company and they told me that their technology will answer all my questions. Huh. No. <laughs> that is not possible. I wish that it were. However, that is not a possibility that you have. You don't just get an easy button for compliance. If there was one, then we would all have done it and you and I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. On the other side, there's policy and there are a lot of people who believe, well, like I can just check a policy off for every single thing. Well, a lot of it, sure. Yeah. But there, there are some things that you genuinely need a technology to do. You're not going to be right. able to, to really keep your CUI super, super safe with just some words on a page that say that you're going to do that. Yeah, so the joke I made earlier was you're not going to get Fred Flintstone to come up and yabba yabba do some uh, FIPS encryption and uh, protect your CUI. If he's FIPS 140-2 certified, maybe it could work. I don't know. But my personal experience is that he is not. So we're going to have to move forward with that. But yeah, so that's kind of the, the general idea that you end up having is there are there are camps that real those technological vendors, um, and I mean we're a technological vendor, technology vendor, but we are the first ones to tell you that technology is not going to solve all your problems. But then on the other side, there are a lot of consultants who are like, oh, all the policies will just solve your problems, and you don't need to have a whole lot of technology or any at all, and everything will be fine. Neither one of these is right. Uh, you really do have to have more of like a combination of those two, and have them in the appropriate places to make it work for compliance. Yeah, so what you're saying is, you know, it's not good to be a zealot uh, or a purist in this, uh, be a little bit more kind of like the golden mean um, and, and try and uh, integrate the two of those. So let, let's think a little bit about how these two things can work together. You know, what does technology and policy mean in terms of working together? How does that look? Yeah, definitely. So um, a great example would be, okay, if, if I'm saying, for example, that I'm going to have training that has to be done there, I think it's ATL2, 3.2.1, and 3.2.2, and 3.2.3, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, I, I was <laughs> doing that this morning over my coffee. As you should, 
Thank you. Right. Um, I will check that later to make sure that I did that, but I think those are the right numbers. Uh -huh. um, but that is awareness and training. So awareness and training has three different sections to it. Um, one of them is talking about role-based training. Another one is talking about insider threat training. Another one's talking about training on your policies and procedures. This is a great example. You could, for example, use an external technology to do your training. That is completely fine. If that makes it easier for you to do your training, super. Like, I'm loving that. If you have a training that does your insider threat training, and then maybe you have other trainings that do your role base. And then there's the third one, where it's a training you have to do on your policies and procedures. So if you don't have policies and procedures written, how are you supposed to train on them? It's not possible. So that technology does not solve that problem. Not right. at all. <laughs> it's not, right. not going to help you with that control. So it's a good example of where you'd have to have a policy for each one of those. But for that third one, when you're talking about training on policies and procedures, you legitimately can't have the control without the policies. So you can't have, but you can also do it without technology in this particular example, which is why I use it. You could also do training internally if you want to, uh, you know, on slides. But really, I would say that still has technology involved because you'd still have to make a slide deck, with, which is a solution that's technologically based. So I think right. that that's kind of where the confusion comes in is that some people look at these things and say, oh, okay, well, like, I'll just write a policy for this and it's going to check the box. Well, you have to follow through in some way and technology can make it significantly easier to follow through on those things. Like I just mentioned, if you have a training, a training platform that you use from a vendor, that's a technology you can use and then you don't have to worry about it internally and it's already done and documentation's already in there and you're good to go. But right. again, got to have the policy too. Right, so that brings us up to the to the next uh, point we wanted to talk about. And, you know, how does that make your compliance journey easier? Made it clear you shouldn't be. It's it's a fool's journey to be a purist here. Yes, um, absolutely. And so when we talk about kind of this um, mix, how, where do you see it um, facilitating uh, the org, org's journey? So I think that if you have those, you can try to do everything. I mean, it's something that we've said so many times before, right? You can try to do a lot of this stuff in-house and there's nothing wrong with doing that, but there comes a point where you need that external help, those external technologies to help you and those external consultants to help you, right? right. So you get those policies set up, you understand what you need to do, and then you find those places where technology could help you. Vulnerability scanning is a great example. I don't know of any companies, and maybe they're out there, but I don't know of any companies that individually scan every one of their computers like by hand. I don't know if anybody who does that. That is a good example of having a technology that's going to make it significantly easier for you. You get a vulnerability scanning tool, you're good to go. It also, another thing too to think about is a lot of technologies will check off more than one control. So I know that that's something that's really a huge concern for members of the DIB, and I don't blame anybody, it, it's cost, right? It right. costs a lot to do this kind of stuff. You know, you got to have, you, oh, am I going to have a training technology? And I'm also going to have vulnerability scanning, and I'm also going to have asset inventory management. And I'm going to have endpoint management. There's a lot of things. But if you find the right tool, and you find the right technology that has all the information kind of in a really vast, like it'll check a lot of those boxes, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. And if you then have policies and procedures that really set up all of those technologies, you're going to be in a much, much better place than if you're trying to do all technology or trying to do all policy and procedures. Yeah. So it sounds like don't be pound foolish, penny wise, penny wise, pound foolish, right? All the things. Yes, exactly. All those things. <laughs> Anything with pounds and pennies and things and stuff and whatever. Yeah, well, it seems like, you know, it could be a cost-saving exercise on the, on the part of some organizations. Look, we really need to make this as inexpensive as possible. So we're right. going to try and do as much of, as we can by policy. Absolutely. Right. And I understand that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having that mentality to a point, but with the open-ended understanding that there are going to be technological solutions that will make it even cheaper, even though they may not look that way at, at the beginning. If you do all that policy and procedure first, then you can kind of figure out where those holes are, those gaps, that sort of gap analysis internally, and then see like, okay, well, where are there places we can save some money? Where are there places where technology, you know, makes sense and is going to save us some money? Definitely. Right. right. So let's just kind of uh, round this up by looking at some of the takeaways. And I think uh, that's kind of an important um Thing to kind of finish on, uh, I like the main points uh, that people should take away from this discussion. Yeah, definitely. Um, so one is uh, clearly, you know, don't be a purist, don't die on the hill of I have to do this, you Indeed. know, 
right? It's it's uh it's not worth <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not <laughs> to your it's health, not. your sanity. But seriously, why why don't you kind of uh, lead us uh, through some of the main takeaways as you see it? Sure, I, that is the biggest one. You know, don't don't feel like you have to go one way or the other. Another takeaway too is like like you had just mentioned, don't make yourself so concerned with cost that you lose opportunities to make things a lot easier and a lot more right. compliant. Like that's another huge one. You know, don't be a purist of everything, but also don't think, okay, I've got to save every single penny. And I understand completely how expensive this can be, but there really are, te- if you find the right technological solutions, you really can make things a lot easier for yourself genuinely. And, and more they- cost effective. And more cost effective in the long run, even though it may not seem that way. And there's like, there might be a little bit of sticker shock in the long run, it'll probably be significantly cheaper and easier. I mean, just talking about resources alone, it, it may end up be a lot easier to do yeah. that. Definitely. Right. <laughs> and the other takeaway to, to have, <clears throat> excuse me, is if you need assistance with this kind of stuff, there are people out there to help you. You know, you do not need to do all of this by yourself. We've said this a million times and we'll say it a million more, but there are, there are so many different RPOs that are out there or, or different consulting companies that can help you out with compliance. They can help you with these policy documents. I mean, if you're right. like, man, this is too much documentation, I can't handle it. It just like there, you can find a great technological partner. You can find a great consulting partner to help you with all the documentation as well. Yeah, and um, you know there are the free fifteen minute, uh, free fifteen minutes with Noel Vestal. So uh, we'll put that in the show notes so people can sign up if they want to have fifteen minutes of free compliance talk with you. Mm-hmm. Which you, you said we should start calling it talk therapy. <laughs> yeah, it's compliance therapy. Yes, because I, I genuinely, a lot of the people I talk to, and I do not blame anybody, are are very frustrated and confused. And because it is, it's so much information to process and it's so many different things to think about. And most people, you know, have other stuff going on. They're not just a compliance manager like I am. You, They have a lot of different hats that they're wearing. So I genuinely, genuinely understand how people feel. It is a all lot. Right. You feel their pain. And, and totally. we say that, we say that with all sincerity. We really do. All right. I think that wraps. That's a wrap. All right. That's a wrap. All right. Wrap. No, all until next time. <laughs> Are you going to be Wonder Woman or am I going to be Wonder Woman? You can be Wonder Woman. I mean, truly, you're the awesome. wonderful one here. Definitely okay. you. <laughs> you're too kind. All right. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>